Hello, my name is Nick Debra. I'm an independent educator consultant in the fields of data visualization and dashboard design. And in this short video, I want to talk about the problem with slope charts and why I basically never use them or not much anyways uh, anymore. And so as most of you probably know, slope charts are used in situations like this, for example, where I want to compare an earlier period in time with a later period in, uh, in time. And so for example, maybe I want to see, uh, I want to compare the various countries in which we sell products in terms of their sales before a new sales strategy was implemented, uh, which of course would be here, and uh, after it was implemented. Now, most of you probably know that the most common ways of visualizing this type of information uh, are with side-by-side -side pie charts or with clustered bar charts. However, um, there have been many posts written uh, over the years about why uh, these are basically not very effective ways of, uh, of showing this kind of information. It's actually quite difficult to see what changed uh, between the earlier and later period or the before and after period. And virtually all of them recommend uh, slope charts, which uh, is a, a better alternative. And essentially a slope chart is just essentially just a line chart, right? Where we're just showing two points in time, uh, you know, typically a before and an after period. And so a slope chart makes the changes from the before period to the after period a lot easier to see. And so with a slope chart like this, for example, I can much more easily and clearly see that France was the country that actually increased their sales the most. But hold on a second. The title of this chart is not which country increased the most, it's which country improved its sales performance the most. And so if, if that's the question that we're trying to answer, then we shouldn't really be looking at euros as we're looking at here. We should be looking at more like percentage change or relative change. And so when we add that notion of relative change and look at those values, we can actually see that in fact, uh, France actually did not improve the most, Belgium did, right? In fact, France didn't even come in second, right? Austria also improved more than France. So what's happening? Well, this is kind of a problem with slope charts, which is that the relative changes, which is very often what we're actually interested in, or it's a big part of the story anyways, they tend to make those relative changes look a lot smaller than they really are amongst smaller values. Right. And so even though this slope chart strongly suggested that France had improved their sales performance the most, that's not even close to true, right? Belgium actually improved not just by a little more, but by a lot more. And so this is basically the problem with uh, slope charts and why I tend to not use them anymore in these before and after situations. There are other chart types. Uh, you've probably seen maybe uh, chart types like this. This is called an arrow chart, which can be used also to show these kind of before and after, earlier versus later kind of uh, kinds of scenarios. And so, you know, the problem though is that there, we we still have the same perceptual problem with these these chart types, right? I, it still looks like France increased considerably more than Belgium or Austria. And yet, as we saw when we looked at the raw data, that was actually not nearly uh, true. So what do we do, right? Is there a way that we can show this kind of before and after data without accidentally misleading readers? Well, my go-to solution is to basically add the relative changes, the change of percentage onto an arrow chart. And this gives me what I call anyways, a, a merged arrow chart because I've basically taken two arrow charts and, and merged them together, right? And so this allows me to answer sort of these absolute questions, like for example, which country had the highest sales after the change? Well, we can still see that it's, it's Germany, for example. However, I can also answer those relative questions, like for example, which country improved its performance the most? And as it turns out, uh, that's actually Belgium and, uh, and, and Austria is, is actually uh, number two. So yeah, this is a busier chart, no question about it, right? However, uh, if we don't show those relative change values alongside the absolute values, the risk isn't that the reader will miss out on important insights. It's that they'll come away from the chart with completely wrong insights, right? If we only showed the part on the left and we didn't show the part on the right, there's a very high risk that people would think that France was the biggest improver, when in fact they were not. Now, I wanna underscore that 
these charts are not handcrafted. They're not, they don't use cherry pick data, right? This is a problem with all slope charts or uh, arrow charts. There's also variants called comet charts as well. All of them basically make these uh, relative changes among small values look smaller than they really are. And so this is why I virtually never use these chart types on their own anymore. I've realized that they just mislead uh, far too often. And in fact, even when the relative changes uh, for both large and small values are very similar, I think it's still necessary to show the relative changes alongside the absolute changes. For example, if I were to look at just this, this chart, this arrow chart showing how much Unfortunately, billionaires increased their wealth during the pandemic. Uh, they didn't lose money. They actually made a lot of money. Of course, most people are going to interpret this to mean that Zuckerberg here uh, increased his fortune the most in relative terms. But if I add those relative changes, I can see that actually all of these billionaires increased their wealth by about the same amount in, in relative terms, right? And in fact, Zuckerberg actually uh, actually increased slightly less than most of the others. And so, yes, technically we only need to show relative changes when they're relevant to the insights that the chart was designed to convey, but those relative changes are almost always relevant in these before and after situations, right? In fact, even if the story that we want to tell is solely about absolute values, well, there's still a high risk that the reader will make incorrect relative inferences if we only show them a standard slope chart or arrow chart or, or comet chart, right? Now, I do want to flag an important caveat which applies to all of the charts which I've shown in this video, which is that we really want to be careful when we're making comparisons between just two time periods. Any insights that we derive from that, we have to kind of take with a sort of a boulder of salt. Uh, which I discuss in this uh, other blog post. If you would like to know more about that, I have the URL up at the top, uh, or just uh, uh, visit my website, go to the blog section, and you will find that, uh, that post easily. So I hope that you found this short video useful and interesting, and thanks very much for watching.